Hi, Ross Gilmore here from Wood Tracker. In this video, I want to go over some of the basics of using a white gas stove. In particular, here I'll be using the MSR Whisperlite International model, but most white gas stoves function on the exact same principle. First, a bit about the fuel. White gas, also known under its brand name Coleman Fuel, is a petroleum derivative liquid fuel. It's very similar to gasoline and in particular to naphtha. Now you may ask yourself, well, if it's a liquid fuel, why can't we burn it like we do alcohol in a simple homemade stove? Why do we need this pump, vaporization tube, this whole mechanism? Well, there are two reasons. The first one is that white gas burns a lot more violently than alcohol. It is much harder to control in a simple stove like that. The second reason is that when you burn white gas or gasoline or any similar fuel in its liquid form, it's a very inefficient and a very dirty burn. The whole purpose of this mechanism is to take the liquid fuel and turn it into a gas before igniting it. That will give us a nice, clean, efficient flame. Now let's take a closer look at the mechanism itself. The first thing we have is the fuel bottle with the pump. The pump comes as part of the stove. The bottles are sold separately and they have their own caps. There is no problem transporting the fuel with just the pump covering it. This is what the whole mechanism looks like. It inserts into the bottle fairly easily and just screws into place. What we have here is the valve, which folds for storage, which releases the fuel. And we have the pump mechanism itself, which pressurizes the bottle just enough so the liquid fuel is pushed out of the bottle and into the fuel line and onto the rest of the stove. It connects to the fuel line just by inserting it and securing it with a latch. Once we have the pressurized liquid fuel in here and turn the valve, the fuel will flow into the fuel line and then into this tube over here. Now at this point the fuel is still in its liquid form, but you'll notice that this metal tube passes directly through where we would normally have the flame. When that happens, this tube gets heated and when the liquid fuel reaches this point, it instantly vaporizes, then continues to the rest of the tube in its gas form and is released in order to ignite. Now you'll probably notice a big problem with this design as it stands right now. And that is that currently there's no flame. Without the flame, there's no way for the liquid fuel to turn into a gas once we turn this valve. In order to get the stove started, we have to prime it. And priming it is simply a process of warming up the stove and specifically this tube. So when the liquid fuel passes to it, it turns into a gas. So how do we prime the stove? Well, the first thing you have to do, no matter how you're priming it, is pressurize the bottle itself. On a small bottle like this one, I like to do about 10 pumps. On the bigger bottles, 15 to 20. I find that this gives me sufficient pressure to push the fuel out without creating so much pressure that I cannot control the level of the flame afterwards. Now, in most manuals, you will see that at this point you're directed to open the valve slightly and let some fuel leak into this small pan underneath the stove. Once the pan is filled, you turn off the valve and ignite the liquid fuel. It will burn in a large flame and heat up the vaporization tube, at which point we turn the valve back on, release some more fuel and ignite it in its now gas form. The reason why I don't do that is because, as I mentioned earlier, in its liquid form the fuel burns in a very dirty manner and it creates a big flame, which sometimes scares people and leads them to kick the stove into the bush and run through the hills. What I like to do instead is carry a small bottle like this 
filled with denatured alcohol. Now we're all familiar with denatured alcohol and you use it the same way you would the white gas for priming. You fill up this small pan and you light it, you let it burn to preheat the stove. When it's out, you turn on the valve and ignite the now gaseous uh, white gas. Now the first thing I want to show you is what happens when you improperly preheat a white gas stove. The reason why I want to show you that is because it's a very common error and it's the error that causes most difficulties for people and it can be quite scary if you haven't experienced it before. But in order to do that, I'll pour a small amount of alcohol in the preheating pan. I'm not going to fill it up. I'll ignite it and let it burn out. Now with alcohol it can be difficult to see in sunlight if it's actually burning, but you can look at the liquid inside the pan and you can see it bubbling. It's an easy way to tell. And we're just going to wait for it to burn out. And when it does, we'll turn on the fuel and try to ignite it and see what happens. Now I've used the minimal amount of alcohol here for the preheating. There's no problem if there's still a little bit of flame. The only thing that will happen is that it will ignite. Now, you see we're getting a big flame, a big fireball. At this point, it can be very scary. All you do is turn off the valve and wait. Nothing bad is going to happen. The stove is not going to blow up, it's not going to get out of control, the flames are not going to heat up the fuel bottle and make it explode. Simply turn off the valve and let it die down. What you were seeing here is liquid fuel coming out along with the gas or instead of the gas if the preheating was really insufficient and then igniting. If you were preheating the stove using the white gas, the method I mentioned earlier, this is more or less what you're going to see, a big fireball. That's why I use the denatured alcohol instead. But if this happens to you, and it will happen now and then, if it's cold outside, the stove may not preheat as quickly as you expect, you will get this result. There's nothing to be afraid of. Simply turn off the valve, wait for it to die down, and then repeat the process. Now let's try to prime it again and see if we, need, we can ignite it properly this time. The stove should be hot from the fireball we had earlier. Yes, you can see the alcohol evaporating. Ignite it. If you have a windscreen, it's a good time to put it around the stove just to keep the flame going up and not being blown sideways. Because in really strong winds and cold weather, the flame may end up not touching the vaporization tube at all and not preheating the part that we care about. Now again, we just wait for it to go down and do the preheating process. Once it is out, almost is, we'll turn on the fuel again and see if we can get a better result than we did the last time. And there it is. The stove is now functioning properly. We have a nice blue hot flame. The preheating process worked very well. You can see a big, big difference. The next issue that people have with white gas stoves is that they find it hard to control the flame. Finally, the reason for that is that most people overpressurize the fuel bottles. Like I mentioned with a small bottle like this one, I like to do about 10 pumps. If you overpressurize it, no matter how much you play with this valve, the fuel is coming out full force and there's nothing you can do about it. With the lower pressure, you can control the flame quite nicely. To make it very low, 
bring the valve almost to a close and the flame will go down. I don't know if you can see it, but you can definitely hear the difference. Bring the flame up, obviously open up the valve and we'll get that nice intense flame. If you, have, if you have been running the stove for a long time and you notice that the flame is going down, simply pump it a couple more times the flame will become more intense. There is no problem adding more pressure to the bottle while the stove is on. The last thing to mention is that once you've turned off the stove and the flame has gone, gone out, Wait for it to cool down, don't try to touch it right away, it's quite hot. But once it cools down, remove the fuel line from the bottle and simply unscrew the pump and open it slightly. That will release the pressure that has accumulated inside. You don't want to carry a pressurized bottle in the backpack. It's not going to explode or cause any damage, but you don't want it leaking for any reason. So simply slightly open it, close it back up, and you're good to go.